five million people in Wisconsin, and one of them had the courage to do the budget we asked for. The budget that took a $3.6 billion deficit and turned it into a $300 million surplus. The budget that makes tough choices, like you and I have to do in our small businesses and in our families every single day. The budget that freezes your property taxes for two years. Ladies and gentlemen, 5.5 million people in the state of Wisconsin, and the one who had your back was Governor Scott Walker. Now let's not forget about our friends in the legislature, because last year, clearly you had a choice. You had a choice and you put Republicans in charge of the governor's office, of the Wisconsin State Assembly, and the Wisconsin State Senate. You put us in charge. And this is the team that gave you concealed carry. You put us in charge and this is the team that gave you photo ID. charge and this is the team that assured that Wisconsin is open for business. And the fun part is we stand in very stark contrast to our neighbors to the south, Illinois. You know that nearly every state in the nation started this year in fiscal crisis. So I'm like Governor Walker, chose to handle that fiscal crisis without raising taxes. Others, like Governor Quinn from Illinois, have not met tax increases they do not like. Governor Quinn from Illinois has raised income taxes 46 and 67 percent, still has an $8 billion budget deficit, and their state treasurer is writing a letter to anyone who will listen saying, don't loan to us, we're Illinois. So, when Governor Quinn decided to sign another tax increase into law, a tax increase called the Amazon tax, a tax increase that would have cost some businesses between 20 and 50 percent of their revenue, I decided I would call those businesses and offer them greener pastures in which to grow jobs. <laughs> greener pastures, of course, in the great state of Wisconsin where we have no Amazon tax, like in Illinois. And we have no prescription drug tax like they have in Illinois, no 9.75% sales tax like they have in Illinois, no estate tax like they have in Illinois, no food for consumption tax like they have in Illinois, no energy for manufacturing in the winter tax like they have in Illinois, and no Chicago Bears who collapse in epic football games like they have in Illinois. You know, in January, this was not a partisan debate. In January, Legislators of all political stripes rallied around your cry for more jobs. Less than a month into our new administration, well, a lot of governors around the country were just being sworn in and finding the, the bathrooms in their state capitals. <laughs> Governor Scott Walker was already signing Act 1 into law, making sure Wisconsinites had tax-free health savings accounts. Walker and our legislature made sure that we had a Department of Commerce that truly was faster, smarter, better than our neighbors in the upper Midwest. Governor Walker and our legislature listened to what you said about taxation and regulation and litigation and changed our economic development climate so much that in the Chief Executive Magazine survey, 
when we were number 41 in the nation under the previous administration as far as best places to do business. We soared to number 24, the fastest increase in status in that survey's entire history in the state of Wisconsin. We did what you asked, but some people had a problem with that. Our brave legislature, legislators faced intimidation, aggression, bongos, bullhorns, protest signs that would make you blush, and they stood by you. Some of them knew that by voting on the budget repair bill, the bill that simply asked our government employees to make some of the same sacrifices we had made during the darkest hours of our economic crisis in the private sector. Some of them knew that by taking that vote, they would not come back. But they were willing to risk it all because they knew that in order to lead, they must first serve. In order to do a budget that did not raise taxes, the broken budget had to be repaired. You put us in charge, and when our team stood up for the little people against the big national unions, our legislators were rewarded with recalls. But friends, you were there for us again. You knocked on doors, you made phone calls, you voted, you prayed, and we retained the majority in the Wisconsin State Senate. The will of the people was not defeated, but strengthened and it was renewed. And if big labor and the progressive activists and the paid protesters want to make another run at us, we're going to prove it to them again and again and again that the will of the people will not be steamrolled by special interests. You know they call this class warfare. So let us be the class that fights for the most vulnerable. Let us be the warriors for the American dream. Let us be the defenders of our children's futures. <clears throat> this fall, while we aggressively pursue ways to grow jobs, they will aggressively pursue ways to distract and divide our state. Don't let them. The budget repair bill worked. The budget repair bill worked from Kokona to Brown Deer, Pittsville to the city of Milwaukee. And friends, we're still waiting on a thank you note from that one. The budget repair bill worked. Children are back at school. Teachers are at the fronts of classrooms everywhere. And the budget repair bill worked. When we go to our mailboxes and we open our property tax bills in December, we will open them and we will say the budget repair bill worked. You elected us and it worked. I know that you are sick of the negativity. We are too. You have probably had it with the constant elections. We wish we could just focus on the jobs, but we need you. We thank you for electing us. And we thank you for what you are about to do to fight for what is right once again. There is no better time to have this conversation than on the eve of the anniversary of September 11th. The 23rd Psalm says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. On September 11th, 10 years ago, America walked through the valley of the shadow of death. But truly, we are one nation under God, indivisible, and he has shed his grace on us.
and so we will fear no evil. And so today I urge you to continue to fight for the future of the sons and daughters of the great state of Wisconsin. I ask you to join me on RebeccaForReal.com. I ask you to join me tomorrow on Wisconsin Public Television as Wisconsin remembers 9-11 at 7.30 tomorrow morning. And I ask you to join me in going home tonight and thanking God for the privilege it is to be an American. Thank you, God bless you, God bless the state of Wisconsin, and may God bless the United States of America.